the complete cessation of all biological processes that support an organism is known as death. It can also be described as the complete and irreversible loss of brain and brainstem function. Legal definitions of death occasionally include brain death. Normally, soon after an organism dies, its remains start to degrade. Nearly all species eventually experience death, which is an inevitable process. Death typically refers to entire creatures, necrosis, on the other hand, is a comparable process that affects a single component of an organism, such as cells or tissues. A virus, for example, is not regarded as a creature and can be physically killed without being claimed to have died. Over 150,000 people pass away every day as of the early 21st century, with aging being by far the most common cause of mortality. The concept of an afterlife and the possibility of judgment for one's good and bad conduct in this life are present in many cultures and religions. Human understanding of the phenomenon depends on our understanding of death. There are numerous different scientific methods and ways to understand the idea. Additionally, it has been challenging to develop a single, comprehensive definition due to the development of life-sustaining therapy and the multiple legal and medical definition criteria for death. Making the distinction between life and death is one of the difficulties in defining death. Death would appear to refer to the point in time when life ceases. Since the termination of life functions frequently does not occur simultaneously across organ systems, it can be challenging to determine when death has happened. Therefore, making such a conclusion entails clearly defining the mental boundaries between life and death. The lack of agreement on how to define life makes this challenging. Life can be described in terms of consciousness. An organism is deemed to have died when consciousness ends. The fact that many organisms are alive but probably not aware, such as single-celled organisms, is one of the weaknesses in this methodology. The definition of consciousness, which has been given many various definitions by contemporary scientists, psychologists, and philosophers, is another issue. Furthermore, according to many religious traditions, including Abrahamic and Dermic faiths, awareness does not stop with death. In some cultures, dying is more of a process than an isolated occurrence. It suggests a gradual change in one's spiritual state. When defining the time of death nowadays, doctors and coroners frequently use the terms brain death or biological death, a person is deemed dead when the electrical activity in their brain stops. And stop to electrical activity is thought to signal the passing of awareness. Consciousness must be permanently suspended, not briefly, as in some states of sleep, most notably a coma. When it comes to sleep, many people support the idea that brain death is the most plausible way to distinguish between life and death, despite the fact that several academics find it problematic. The argument in favor of this definition is that brain death has a set of dependable, repeatable conditions. The brain is also essential in determining our identity or what makes us human. It is important to note that brain death should not be confused with being in a vegetative state or coma because the former refers to a condition from which there is no recovery. To everything there is a season, a time to be born, and a time to die. For some, that moment is when a grandparent or parent dies. For others, that time is when a parent or a sibling does. For others, it's a friend or a lover. We all have felt the pain of death at some point, but we often talk so much about the beginning of life we throw parties to find out the baby's gender at birth, then we throw another party to give them gifts, then another party once they spend their first year here on earth, and then every year after that, we tell tales about the day we were born. Even though those tales are ones we cannot remember ourselves and are only constructed from the memories of others. We often talk about birth but rarely about death, and often the first time we do is after someone we love has already passed away. However, this doesn't have to be the case because we will all pass away at some point, so we might as well talk about it now while we still have the chance. Here is to death as everyone knows, death is the end of everything for you, 
it occurs when all of your body's vital functions permanently cease. Your heart stops beating, your breath ceases, and you lose all feeling in your people who have been declared medically dead for hours or even days come back to life after having reported having OBEs. One thing that many people who have had near-death experiences concur on is the fact that the expression, life flashes before your eyes, is very true just before the heart flatlines. They recall their time in the afterlife down to some incredible specifics about this side of life that they just couldn't have made up. The picture of our entire lives that is frequently given to us is not what we believe it is. It does not include the significant events that flash before our eyes, such as the wedding, graduation, or the first time you heard your child cry. Instead, it consists of unimportant details. If you thought staring at a white cat while climbing a flight of stairs was oddly specific, it's because a young man who had a near-death experience witnessed that. It's also riding your bike as a child, sitting at your desk and randomly checking your email, and staring at a white cat as you climb stairs. It's the things we don't give any thought to and the moments we don't usually remember in life that are brought before us in the face of death. One of the reasons why many people fear dying is because it appears so lonely you entered this world alone, but do we leave alone? Death was definitely not as lonely as we might think. Whether this was just a figment of their imagination trying to reassure them and make them comfortable in their last few moments or it was really the spirit or soul of their dead relatives is something we'll never know. Many people who have had near-death experiences explained that they saw a dead relative there to either escort them to the afterlife or tell them it wasn't their time yet. The way we buried our dead has taught us a lot about human history, from tombs to mummies. Dead people have left us more information than the living have, according to the oldest international burial site, which dates back to around 10,000 years ago in Kafsa, Israel. At this site, the dead were carefully placed in coffins with other items like clothing, trinkets, and food, and these coffins were then placed carefully in a cave. There was also evidence in this cave that the dead were many different religious organizations pray over the remains to ensure they have a good outcome in the afterlife, but what that afterlife entails differs for different people in many different cultures. Instead, most people sit together to reflect on the life that has passed and discuss all the good the person did while they were alive. Families are urged to be strong in the face of death since according to Abrahamic religions, your deeds on this earth determine where you spend eternity beyond. However, for certain other religions, such as Hinduism, what is dead shall be reborn after the ceremonies and prayers. Even when we expect it, death is painful because thinking about losing someone is different from actually losing them and mourning the relationship that it once was. Despite the fact that we are fully aware that these things can happen and that they are part of the human experience, when we are confronted with a harsh reality, the feeling of grief overwhelms us. The scariest aspect of death is its finality, realizing one morning that all the shared experiences we once had are gone forever, realizing that all we have left of those experiences are memories, old memories that we cannot recreate, and new memories that we cannot create. But more often than not, these experiences give us a new perspective on life, they reaffirm the truth of the brevity of life, and they give us the courage to experience all that life has to offer. When you're staring at your loved one who is about to pass away, remember that death is typically not as painful and troubling for the person dying as it is for you. Spend the next two hours sitting with them, squeeze their hand in yours, and talk about all the wonderful things in life. Talk about shared experiences about the loss that you have experienced. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.